Good morning and welcome to the CIPC annual return and SARS tax return or compliance webinar. To give some background about our webinar today, CIPC invited SARS to participate in the webinar as many registered SMME businesses confuse CIPC annual returns with SARS tax returns and vice versa, with a result that they do not comply to both. Non-compliance to either have serious implications for registered businesses. CIPC's registration systems are linked to SASH, and when a business gets registered, it gets a tax number automatically, which is allocated by SASH. Many people that register a business do not know what SASH will require from them once their business is registered. This session is aimed to provide information on annual returns and tax returns um, with regard to compliance in order to assist registered businesses to comply to both the Companies Act requirements and the income tax requirements. I'm Alma Pinkham from the Corporate Education Unit and I will be facilitating today's program. The CIPC presentation will be done by my colleague Simon Vignani. As part of his introduction, Simon will make you aware of a Learn IPIS course for company directors. His presentation will be followed by Ms. Mpo Motseme of SASH, who will do the presentation on behalf of SASH. During the webinar, you are welcome to post your questions related to today's topic only. Um, we will respond to these questions after the presentations. If you have questions for CRPC that are not related to today's topic, please log an inquiry on the CRPC website inquiry system. Should you have questions for SASH that are not related to the topic, please phone the SASH contact center. The recording of this webinar will remain on YouTube and Facebook should you wish to uh, view it at a later stage. I will now hand over to Simon Vignani for his presentation. Simon um, has been employed in the education unit since 2014 um, and before that he was also with CIPC in the patent unit and at one stage with uh, DTI also in the education unit. The corporate education unit that we work for promotes the education and awareness uh, of CIPC products and services. Simon, you may please continue with your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Elma. Good uh, morning, everyone. My name is Simon Fignan from Companies and Intellectual uh, Property Commission, uh, CIPC. And uh, I'm going to share with you today on our annual returns, the registration, as well as um, a reinstatement. So the uh, agenda is uh, as follows. Uh, we are going to first talk about the uh, Learn IBs, annual returns, followed by um, financial uh, accountability supplements, AFS and uh, XP XPRL. We will look at the deregistration process as well as the uh, reinstatement. As Elma mentioned uh, in her opening, I'll now talk uh, about the, um, the land IBs. So CIPC has developed the land IBs uh, course. It is a, a short educational course aimed at assisting new and existing SMMEs, company directors to gain basic knowledge of their duties and responsibilities in order to improve compliance to the Companies Act of 2008. The course is free of charge and anyone who is interested can register on the CIPC website to join the course. The course consists of a number of short uh, videos 
and a few questions that must be answered after each video. The course should take roughly two to two and a half hours to complete. However, one do not need to do it in one uh, sitting. One can follow the course in your own time and at your own uh, pace. Person that attended the course can obtain a certificate of attendance after completing the course. Please take a note that it is not an accredited uh, course. For my information and inquiries, you can send them to e-learning at uh, cipc.co.za or you may contact our uh, call center. So, ladies and gentlemen, without a waste of time, we'll start with our presentation of the day on annual returns, uh, legislative, legislative uh, framework, and uh, platforms for, for lodgement. So, now this is in terms of the uh, Companies Act, Section 33 of Companies Act, and uh, Regulation 30 of the uh, uh, Companies Act. And then we'll also look at the Close Corporations, Section 15A of the Close Corporation Act, as well as Regulation uh, 16 of the Close Corporation and Act. So now uh, you may use the following uh, uh, platforms if you want to file or lodge the annual returns. We, uh, CIPC, we've introduced a BIS portal. So one can file uh, annual returns on a uh, BIS portal. You can also file annual returns uh, on uh, e-services, the old e-services. You can go to our website and then uh, you can go to a CIPC website, go to uh, e-services whereby you'll be able to uh, file uh, annual returns. One can also file uh, annual returns at one of our self-service centers and partners site. So for more information and addresses, please visit our website at www.cipc.co. On our homepage, you can uh, click on contacts and then that's where you find uh, more information or about uh, our self-service uh, centers as well as uh, uh, our partners. So now, in terms of the Act, Act uh, 2008, uh, all companies and close corporations are required by law to file their annual returns with the CIPC on an annual basis within a prescribed time uh, period. So that one will ask, there are many questions that are asked by our customers as to why do we need to uh, file annual returns. So now the purpose of uh, filing annual returns is to confirm whether a company or close corporation is still in business or trading, or if it will be in business in the near future. So the annual returns may be regarded as a type of annual or renewal of a company or our close uh, corporation. So now, if any annual returns are not filed within the prescribed uh, time uh, period, so now we assume that the company or close corporation is in, in, in active, and as such, CIPC will start with the deregistration de process to remove the company or close corporation from its uh, records. So now the, the legal effect of the deregistration uh, process is that the juristic personality is withdrawn and the company or close corporation ceases to exist. So in other words, you will be removed uh, from uh, our database or the company will be removed or close corporation from uh, our uh, database. So now there's a fee payable for annual returns, of course. Now, what is important is that uh, annual returns are not uh, related to tax returns. Hence, we invited the uh, SARS to come on board or to join us today to share more information on uh, tax returns. So, annual returns are filed with 
uh, CIPC on uh, our uh, platforms. As I uh, mentioned, even in the pre previous slides and on these slides, that you can file them on our website on e-services or either on a uh, service portal, uh, self-service centers, as well as the uh, pa partner uh, side. So now payment can be done by either debit or credit cards, or it can be done directly after the calculation on e-services and this portal, even for those who have a customer code, if they have money, they deposit money on their customer code, and then they can use uh, that facility to make uh, uh, payments for, for annual returns. Now, the other thing that is important with uh, annual returns is that uh, annual returns depends on the turnover of uh, the company. So now let's just take, for example, uh, if a company is um, uh, making less than $1 million, uh, per annum, uh, obviously you only pay a hundred rand. And then, of course, if there's a late payment, obviously you will have to pay a, a penalty uh, for that uh, 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 period. So now if it's, less, if it's uh, making uh, $1 million and more, but less than 10 million, obviously, it will be uh, 450. So I'm just uh, uh, giving uh, that uh, example. And then, but what is important again is that even if the company is not uh, doing any business, but you still have to file uh, annual returns. So now, if those annual returns are not filed at the at a prescribed uh, time limit, Obviously, in two years' time or so on, and then CIPC will start with the uh, deregistration uh, process. So now it is very important to uh, file uh, uh, annual returns. So now let's just look quickly at the uh, financial accountability supplements and accountability financial um, uh, supplements, as well as the XPRL. So now, before payment or a annual, uh, annual returns fees, a financial accountability supplements, FAS or annual financial statement, AFS, must be filed on e-services. It can be filed as part of the AR process or on its own, uh, uh, on its own. Now, um, Financial accountability supplements are meant for SMMEs. So SMMEs file financial accountability supplements, FAS. But for uh, bigger com companies, they file uh, annual financial uh, statements. So these are audited uh, financial uh, statements. So because sometimes it causes a confusion. So you need to understand that AFS is audited a financial statement that are filed by bigger companies and it's got nothing to do with uh, small uh, uh, businesses. So now uh, FAS is a summary of information regarding a company's record keeping and the maintenance of the financial records. Private companies that do not need to submit financial uh, financial statement must file FAS through e-services. So now, uh, just to uh, advise you, at the time when you file uh, annual returns, you will uh, complete a questionnaire about the finances of your company. So now, those questions are related to FAS. Yes. So at the time of finding uh, annual returns, then you just need to answer that uh, questionnaire. FAS is an easy questionnaire that has to be uh, answered at the time of uh, filing uh, annual returns. But for bigger companies, uh, these are audited uh, financial st statement in terms of Regulation 28 of the Companies Act it must be filed through XPRL. So XPRL is extensible business reporting language. So now uh, this 
is available on our website. You can go to our homepage, you click on resource. That's where now you'll be able to access XPRL, but it's got nothing to do with SMEs. For small business, you file financial accountability uh, supplements. So you don't need to file uh, AFS, which are audited uh, financial uh, statement. But for more information of on FAS and a a AFS information, consult our website. Uh, there are also um, uh, questions there that you can uh, go through them. And then for more information on XPRL, you can send inquiries to uh, XPRL at CIPC.co.za. So now all this information is available on our uh, website. So now let's just quickly look at the uh, voluntary uh, the registration requirement and uh, overview. If you want to uh, deregister uh, your company or your uh, close corporation, so now let's look at this section. There is uh, section 82, subsection 3 of the Companies Act of 2008 and Regulation 40. So now a business may be referred for the registration upon application by any party subject to section 82, subsection uh, 3B. So if annual returns are outstanding for two or more years in succession, if the commission believes that the company or close corporation has been inactive for seven years or commissioner receive a request in the prescribed manner, and form and determine that the company has ceased to carry a business and has no assets, or because of inadequacy of its asset, there is no reasonable probability of the company being uh, liquidated. So now before 1 May 2011, uh, under the 1973 Companies Act and Close Corporation Act, business who have been referred to for the registration where annual returns uh, were outstanding for a period of uh, uh, six months. So now AR deregistration notification or pending reg registration mailed to the uh, registered postal address as reflected on the uh, CIP's uh, records. And then we also inform companies or CC of intended uh, deregistration if we are just about uh, to uh, deregister uh, some of uh, 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 inactive uh, 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 companies. So let's look at the AR deregistration issues or on notification of pending uh, deregistration. Of course, at CIPC, we are encounter encountering uh, some challenges when it comes to this. Uh, addresses as per CIPC register are outdated. Some of this information is not updated, and therefore, some of these notice notices uh, do not uh, reach uh, the intended uh, this destination. Results uh, a high volume of uh, return mail and non notification. You know, uh, since notices are sent by registered mail entities, things it is a uh, Arto fines, and then they do not uh, actually collect them at the uh, uh, post office. So these are some of the, of the uh, challenges uh, that we are uh, facing as uh, CIPC. So now some of uh, registered addresses on CIP registers are that uh, auditor or accounting officers, and they do not always uh, action them. Uh, E-contact detail uh, incorrect, no legal duty to submit e-contact uh, details. So now uh, with these uh, uh, challenges, we advise all our customers to uh, uh, update that information on our uh, database so that we, uh, when we send out uh, this info, these notices, and then obviously it will uh, uh, reach uh, them. Now let's look at annual return uh, deregistration. Our cancellation. If the registration is due to non-compliance in respect of the lodging of annual returns, filing the outstanding annual returns while in a, a deregistration. If deregistration for any other reason, written objections to 
the registration at cipc.co.za. So now, and once a company or CC is finally registered, no annual uh, return filing or objection can be a, a, a process. Of course, there are also uh, uh, requirements uh, for a voluntary uh, uh, deregistration. So they are as, as follows, a certified ID copy of any of the person signing the request if you uh, voluntarily uh, apply for deregistration. Tax number, if available, tax clearance, they call it PIN number. Now, I, I think Mpo will uh, uh, give a clarity when it comes to this. Statement confirming that the company or close corporation is not carrying out on business or is a domain. And then the company has no assets or because of inadequacy of assets, that there is no reasonable probability of the company being uh, uh, liquidated. For the time, uh, turnaround time uh, for the registration is five working days to process uh, the request, but it might take up to four months uh, because CIPC, if it's voluntary the registration, they will wait in terms of the company's act that they just give that period that there will be no objections from any other party. And then if there's no object objection, Obviously, they will finalize uh, the uh, the registration uh, uh, process. So now, uh, for a third party, uh, uh, these are the the requirements, and then a certified ID copy, tax number, tax clearance, and and then a statement on confirming that the company or close corporation is not carrying out on a business or is not dormant. And then if the company has no assets because of uh, uh, the inadequacy of its asset, that there is no reasonable probability of the company being uh, uh, liquidated. So now documentary proof that the company or close corporation is not carrying out, carrying on business or is dormant and has no assets or because of uh, inadequacy of its asset that there is no reasonable probability of company being uh, liquidated. If the third party, the statement must be supplemented with sufficient uh, documentary proof confirming the statement. And then of course there are also uh, objections and then there's, if there's a voluntary uh, deregistration uh, objections, if you object, then the letter must be clearly state the reason of objecting to the deregistration. If uh, the other party applied for deregistration, and but the third party also, uh, the other party also uh, object, but it must be a letter written to uh, deregistration at cipc.co.za, and then it must furnish us with uh, reasons why uh, you are objecting uh, to that. Uh, uh, the registration uh, that was uh, actually uh, uh, applied. So now it should be noted that this process cannot be used if the reason for the registration is non-compliance with annual returns. If the company or close corporation was referred for the registration due to non-compliance with the annual returns, the deregistration process will only be cancelled upon the filing of uh, all outstanding uh, annual returns. So now, in other words, if a company or uh, a close corporation is uh, actually owing annual re returns, but at the same time, they apply for a, a deregistration. So now, obviously, that will not be processed until you file all outstanding annual returns. So now if annual returns are not filed, then they won't uh, uh, process uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the registration. So now uh, the turnaround times is five working days to process the request and it must be submitted before the date of final uh, uh, registration. So now, of course, there are also consequences uh, for uh, the registration that the legal effect of the registration process, juristic uh, personality is withdrawn. Obviously, it will uh, cease to exist on our database. 
directors, members may be held uh, personally liable for all debts action that incurred during uh, such period. Uh, that is in terms of uh, uh, a common uh, law. So it goes on in terms of Companies Act uh, uh, 2008, removal of a, a company from the register does not affect the liability of any former director or shareholder of the company or any other person in respect of the act or omission that uh, took place uh, before the company was uh, removed. But in terms of uh, the old act of 1973, the liability of the uh, of every director, officer, and member of the company shall continue and may be enforced as if the company had not been uh, deregistered. Continue to exist an association whose members are personally liable uh, for 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 the debts. So, in terms of the uh, close cooperation, if uh, the registration after one May two thousand eleven. The same as for uh, companies uh, applied. Uh, if it's now the if it was uh, before, uh, is if it's to, to do us uh, uh, before. So the same will apply in terms of the uh, companies. Uh, if they deregistered before uh, one May two thousand and eleven, uh, repeat uh, repeal sections twenty six of the Closon Corporation Act may apply. If it if it's if it is before. 1 May 2011, but if it's after, then the 2008 Companies Act will apply. But if it's before 1 May 2011, obviously the Close Corporation Act of 1984 uh, will uh, uh, apply. So if a close corporation was deregistered while having outstanding liabilities, the members at the time of deregistration shall be jointly and severally uh, liable. Possible reckless trading if directors, members allows the deregistration while knowing that there's uh, outstanding uh, 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 debt. So now, um, now one can also apply for uh, reinstatement if uh, a company is uh, uh, deregistered. Uh, it can be uh, uh, reinstated, reinst reinstated in terms of uh, Section 33 of the Companies Act. Uh, regulation 30 of the uh, uh, company state. So now with close cooperation is section uh, 15A of close cooperation act and regulation uh, uh, 16. So restoration, you have a first start with uh, application to restore the company in terms of section 82, subsection four of the company's act, regulation 40 of the uh, company's uh, regulation. So now once the uh, restoration uh, is been uh, approved, then we'll, you will uh, start with the process of uh, reinstatement and then uh, check all the requirements. If you need any other information, that information is uh, also available uh, on, our, on our website. And then there are also step-by-step uh, -step guides uh, that are also available on our website to assist you if you want to uh, apply for a reinstatement of your company or your uh, close uh, uh, co co uh, close corporation. So um, let's just look at the uh, reinstatement again. Uh, uh, that uh, business may also apply for reinstatement upon meeting the uh, the requirements so now grant or reinstatement by a business itself uh, proof that it was in business at the time of uh, being finally deregistered so it will be uh, 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 required so proof that it has also has immovable property is also uh, one of the uh, requirement. Hence, I've said that the information, this information is also available on our website. So we have a step-by-step -step guides that can uh, assist you when you apply for reinstatement. So now, after the reinstatement application has been uh, filed, all outstanding uh, returns must be 
lodge in order to change the status to into a business because remember that the company was uh, actually uh, maybe final uh, uh, deregistered and then once everything is done and then the restoration is done and then once it's approved that restoration and then from there you start uh, filing all uh, outstanding final returns and then once that is done obviously the company uh, status will be uh, in, uh, in 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 business. So now these are some of the uh, forms or documents that you need to 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 use when you uh, apply for a reinstatement. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the form COR forty point five, and then duly completed, and then and signed certified ID copies, certified identity copy of the owner of the customer code. Uh, is very important. Uh, sometimes it's just filed by uh, someone else. Obviously, if the customer code is not of the applicant, obviously we need uh, the customer code of the uh, the owner of the uh, customer code certified uh, ID copy. Uh, proof of uh, 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 of that entity was in business at the time of uh, uh, the registration. If the company was doing any business at the time of uh, the registration bank statement uh, are also uh, one of the requirement and then sufficient documentary proof indicating that the company or close corporation was in business or that it has any outstanding asset or liabilities uh, uh, for example of property of intellectual property rise at the time of uh, uh, the registration and also mandate from the applicant confirming that the customer may submit or his or on his or her, her behalf so now you can send it at a reinstatement at cipc.co.za and then the turnaround times is five working days uh, to uh, process uh, uh, that um, uh, request a uh, reinstatement uh, uh, by uh, uh, creditors. So now it is not advisable for creditors to follow administrative uh, reinstatement uh, uh, process. So now any interested party may apply for reinstatement, but companies regulation 40 state that the process is only complete once outstanding annual returns have been uh, filed. So if there are any outstanding annual returns, obviously this process won't be finalized. It will only be finalized once all outstanding uh, annual returns are settled. Only the company or CC itself has the duty to file annual returns. Creditors are advised to approach the High Court for a court order to of a reinstatement. If it's creditors, creditors are advised to approach the High Court. But for uh, companies and close corporation, they can uh, file uh, these uh, annual returns as part of the requirements to uh, reinstate uh, the company. So court order must be submitted to re reinstatement for uh, processing if it was uh, filed uh, by creditors. And then obviously they will have to submit the court order to uh, CIPC using the reinstatement uh, uh, at cipc.co.za uh, uh, email address. Normal processing procedure, procedures applies for reinstatement is the same as the when you is apply is uh, the request was done by a company or a closed uh, a, a corpor a corporation. So once the court order is processed, status changed to in business. Obviously, that will be a change and then refer back into annual return registration within two to three weeks. And then legal personality is still intact during the deregistration uh, process. And then and now I'll come to the last part of my uh, presentation. And then for any other uh, inquiries, we, we also advise all our customers uh, to log uh, the uh, inquiries on our inquiry system and then that, uh, that facility is available on CIPC website. You go to uh, CIPC website and then uh, 
uh, you uh, click on these inquiries and then you may use your customer code and then password uh, to log uh, inquiries and then obviously uh, our business unit uh, will uh, revert uh, back to you or you can uh, call our uh, call center number at 086-100-2472 or you may visit uh, CIPC uh, Facebook. Uh, we have uh, our consultants are working there and then they will be able to, to assist uh, you. Or you may visit one of our uh, uh, walk-in centers. Uh, the addresses are available on uh, CIPC website and then they will be able to, to uh, uh, assist you. And then uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for, for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. <clears throat> I will now hand over to Ms. Mpo Motsemi to share her presentation. Mpo is an experienced tax educator who has worked for SASH for over 18 years. She has represented SASH on various external engagements with taxpayers due to her extensive knowledge in various taxpayer segments. Mpo is a member of a Management Services Institute and has qualifications in operations management, project management and business communication. I want to thank Mpo in advance for her presentation. We appreciate her willingness to join us today and to share the important information. Thank you Mpo. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Elma, uh, for the introduction and for inviting us uh, to this uh, workshop. Uh, my name is Mpo Hutzeme, as Elma has said. I am from SARS, from a division called the Text-Based uh, text Broadening and Education, and uh, our main mandate is to try and educate our taxpayers, because as much as uh, we do provide the services at SARS, um, we also need to educate you so that you can understand what SARS is all about. Okay. Uh, can you please press the next slide for me? Elma or Rutsani? Um, yeah, I'm unable to, Rutsani. Can you Both, move? Remove, you move from your side. Okay, on my side, it's not moving. Okay, let me, I'll let my presentation. That's a second. I think we're about there, but uh, Rizani will help us with the slides. Thank you. Just seem to be having a bit of a technical glitch, but just give us a moment, please, and we'll continue with the presentation as soon as possible.
Can I see my screen now? Not yet. Should Simon stop sharing? Um, let me control it from here. Yes, I Simon. Okay, yeah. I remove remove it from sharing Simon. Can you remove your screen from sharing? Simon has stopped sharing. Mpo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. I was saying, can you remove your screen from sharing? Okay. I have. Okay, thank you. Should I start sharing? Yeah, let me see if, if he's going to share from my side. <clears throat> we can see the first slide of every time. Yeah, you can see the first slide, isn't it? Yeah, now I'm working on that. the next page okay thank you so much okay um sorry about the delay uh the purpose of this presentation is to merely provide information in an easily understandable format and is intended to make the provision of the legislation more accessible the information therefore has no binding legal effect and the relevant legislation must be consulted in the event of any doubt as to the meaning or application of any provision so as SARS, uh, we have our vision, which is our 2024 vision, where we're saying our vision is to build uh, a smart modern SARS with unquestionable integrity, which is trusted and administered and admired by the, the government, the public, as well as our international pet peers. And then for the purpose of this presentation, we will focus on the following strategies. So we as SARS are saying we are going to try, or we are making it easy, and simple and simple to comply and we have modernized our systems and um, they are seamless and we also have our online digital uh, services and um, we make it hard not to comply so by making it hard not to comply we're just trying to say it is so easy to comply with SARS especially using our <laughs> online services okay uh, moving on to the next slide please So our points for discussion will look into uh, what are the obligations of our small businesses and what uh, is a small business incentive. We'll also look into uh, a 10 over tax and the whole compliance where we're saying if a person is a compliant, what do we mean? And we'll also just take a look on our digital platforms that we have as SARS. Next slide. So as a small business, uh, what are your obligations? Next slide, please. Um, what we're saying is that first things first, as Simon had um, explained, you need to register with CIPC. And once you have registered with CIPC on the document that they give you, you will see that your tax number would already be populated there because we have integrated the systems. So there is no need for you to come to SARS and re-register um, for getting a, a tax number. If the tax number is not uh, populated on uh, your document, then you can then contact SARS because it means that there might be some information that uh, it is not verified. So you will need to then verify that information. 
And once you have registered with SARS, what will then be expected from you is that you will then need to declare with SARS. Um, in August, you will then be submitting what we call provisional tax returns, or others might know it as IRP6. And in February, you will then be submitting again uh, the second part of it. And at the end of your financial year, you will then submit what we call an IT14. Uh, your financial year, you choose. It's up to you. When you are registering with CIPC, I do believe that they do give you options of choosing which would be your financial year. But the SARS financial year starts from March and it ends in February the following year. And then once now you have registered, your business is registered, what then will be expected from you is that you will then need to register for pay as you earn. And you also as a director uh, or a shareholder in your business, you also need to register for income tax because you are treated as an employee in your company. And when registering for pay as you earn, you need to register within 21 days of becoming an employer because once you've opened a business and you have people that are working in your business, you are then regarded as an employer. Then we also have an option to register on e-filing where you can use the REV01 form uh, that you can find on e-filing. Now that you have registered um, uh, for pay as you earn, Zani, I don't know if um, Mpo's having a bad internet connection. I think we've lost the sound. Yeah, we lost it. Maybe you can call it. We can just get her to connect again. Yeah, call it. Come again. Mpo? We lost yes, you. We lost you for a, for a couple of seconds. Okay, where did you lose me? Sorry about that. I think you were still talking about your registration. Uh, okay, the registration for the EMP201. Yeah. The registration for PS1. Okay. All right. Just give me a sec. Okay, as I was saying, that you need to register for pay as the end within 21 days of becoming an employer, and you can use the REV01, which is available on e-filing. And once you have now registered, uh, what will be expected from you is that you will need to make your declarations. And your declarations um, are due on the 7th of every month, and you'll be using the return that we call an EMP. 201 to complete and declare uh, under your pay as you have. And uh, payments also will be due on the 7th of every month. Okay. And uh, please note that once you are registered for pay as you have, you'd also be expected to submit what we call a reconciliation, which uh, we have it, uh, a biannual reconciliation, which is due at the end of October, which was for six months, and the final reconciliation, which is due at the end of May. So currently the employers are submitting their final reconciliation, which is due on the 31st of March. And with the reconciliation, what then happens is that it is when then people would say, I have received an IRP5 from my employer. So that's what we use the, the declaration for. And should you then decide to deregister your business, you can do so uh, via e-filing, or you can also uh, do so by coming to a SARS branch. But please remember, uh, you cannot just walk in into a SARS branch, but you need to book an appointment. So we do assist people, but you need to book an, an appointment. And you can also use the contact us at sars.gov.za. And for tax practitioner, you can send an email to pcc at sars.gov.za. Okay, those are the steps that you can follow when you want to deregister for pay as you end. Okay, then moving along, you have a business that is registered, that is operating, and you are then required to register for VAT. 
What we're saying with that, we have two types of, or two categories in our registration, where we're saying if your business is making a 10 over of a million, it is compulsory for you to register for VAT. And if you are not making uh, a million, but at least you have made uh, 50,000, you can then voluntarily register for VAT. And when registering for VAT, you would use uh, the form, uh, the VAT 101, that is used uh, to register for VAT. And the declarations for VAT are due on the 25th of every month. And if you are registered on e-filing, then you would have the benefit of uh, submitting your returns at the end of uh, the month, depending on the category that they've put you in. But please remember, if the 25th or month end falls within a weekend, you need to submit those returns and make the payments uh, a day before okay it cannot be late because if it is late then you would be penalized again as uh that vendors you can uh, deregister for vet and uh if you want to deregister for vet you would then be deregistering because the business uh is no longer operational okay am i still audible we can move yes, to the, you are. We, we can hear you. Okay. You can move to the next slide. Okay. I don't know if it's the technology on my side. It's slow, but I, because I have the presentation, I will, I think I'll just continue. Okay. Then when uh, moving, uh, we then come to the incentives, which we say uh, the small business incentive. Okay, when it comes to the small business incentive, um, it was it is valid. Um, the assessment would be then starting from the first of April, and it will be ending on the last day of March the following year. So it should be within that period. And these are the tax tables for the small business uh, corporation, where we saying if. Uh, your turnover in a business is 95,750, uh, then there wouldn't be any, it would not be taxable. It will be zero rated when it comes to your taxes. And uh, between 95,751 to 365, uh, it will be 7% of the taxable income above 95,750. So if you have made uh, 365 as an income, you would then need to minus 95,750 and the remainder you will then calculate 7% of that. Okay, so as you can see, the rates on the small business uh, corporation are, are very low as compared to the mainstream where we are saying if you are in business uh, in the mainstream, your tax rate would be at 28%. So with, the, with these incentives, at least we give you um, some relief and the, the tax rates uh, are very, very uh, little. Next slide, please. So who qualifies or how do you qualify? Okay. We're saying that uh, the small business corporation, it is not another business uh, type of entity, but it's just merely an incentive. Okay. So uh, the revenue that you'll be making in the small business corporation, 20% of it uh, may consist of uh, investment income, not more than 20% of it must be from investment income and not more than 20% uh, income must be from rendering uh, services. Uh, next slide, please. So if you are a, a sole proprietor or you are in partnership or you have trust, you unfortunately will not qualify uh, to be under the small business corporation. And um, if you are a shareholder or uh, having shares, it must be of a, a natural person and you must be holding the share for the a full year. Okay. And if you have other businesses, it would be advised that you deregister from the, all the other companies or sissies that you might have so that you can qualify for the small business corporation. And that would include having your dormant companies. If there's shelf companies or non-trading companies, those would, be, those would be also included in that. Uh, next slide. 
When we talk about investment income, we are saying it could be an, any income that will be coming from your dividends, uh, from the rental of uh, immovable property, properties, uh, if there is any interest that you are receiving and any royalties. Those would be, uh, that 20% will be coming from there. And then the next slide, please. And for the personal services, we are saying if the services are rendered, are rendered through a CC or company, uh, if the service is performed by a member or shareholder, if a person uh, in the person, it includes any connected person and the connected person is to the family of the third degree uh, and those would be then not applicable. And when we are talking about personal services, it is the following. Uh, as listed, if your business is in, in an accounting, broadcasting, education, journalism, uh, you are an engineer, actual science, an architect, um, uh, an auctioner, you are consulting, uh, you are an auditor or a surveyor. So those that are up there on the screen, those are the ones that we are referring to. So those are the personal services. Please go down. And please go to the other one, please, the connected persons. And when we're referring to connected person, is that you as the taxpayer, if you have a child that you want to start a business with or you are in business with and you want to benefit from the small business corporation, uh, you will then be disqualified because the child would be connected to you. Your grandchild would also uh, uh, is connected to you your aunt, uh, your grandparents, uh, your in-laws. So anybody that forms part of your family is actually connected to you. So what we're trying to say is um, you can actually start a business with me. I can start a business with Alma or Simon because they are not connected to me in any form. So when you want to form a part of the small business uh, or you want to benefit from the small business corporation, you cannot have a business that you have connected persons with. So yes, you can have a business. Uh, you can start another business with somebody else that you are not connected with and you can then apply for the small business corporation. But remember, one of the things that will disqualify you is that um, if you have other businesses, so it needs you to have only this business why that? So that you can uh, benefit from the tax rate because they are so minimal, then you would put all your efforts into this business. And as the business grows, then you can then move from uh, this, in, uh, this, is, this incentive and you just stay on the, on the SARS, uh, on the income tax, the, the mainstream, and you'll be able then to contribute 28% uh, of your taxable income. Uh, Next slide, please. And then some of the benefits uh, for the small business corporations as part of the incentives is that if you have uh, uh, plant machineries, they can be written off and we give it three years where they'll be depreciating. So on the fifth year, you can claim 50% of it. On the second year, it will be 30%, 30% and on the third year, it will then be at 20%. 20% which if you add all those years, it is you have then uh, claimed depreciation on it over uh, at 100%. And then moving along, the next slide. Uh, we also have uh, something that we call a turnover tax. Uh, what turnover tax is, we say it is a single tax system, which a tax is uh, turnover and not profit. Remember in your normal business life, you would then have an income and you would declare what your expenses are. And from that, we will then tax you. And after being taxed, that's when you will know uh, if your business has made a profit or loss. But when it comes to turnover, we're saying we are taxing you on the whole turnover that you have made before you can even deduct your um, expenses. Okay. Uh, with the turnover tax, it is uh, optional. And if your business is making a turnover of less than uh, a million a year, then you do qualify. Uh, it replaces the need to account for income tax, capital gain tax, dividends tax, and value added tax, unless you have selected to be part of the VAT system. Uh, the next slide, please. 
So if you want to uh, apply or form part of the turnover tax, we say that the applications need to be done before the start of the tax year, that is before the 1st of March. Remember the SARS tax year starts from March and it ends uh, the end of February the following year, okay? If the business commences during the year of assessment, applications need to be done within two months after date of registration. And if a business chooses the turnover tax method, the year end for that business must be the end of February uh, in any year. Okay, next slide. Uh, you also have an option to do an online quick test where you, where you will check if you do qualify to register for turnover tax. Uh, you can navigate and go to the SARS website, which is www www.sars.gov.za, then you would click on the link or button that's written small business and employers. And then from there, you would then click on the one that says 10 of a text and you will then uh, scroll down on how to register. Then you would click, click on the quick test and on the quick test, if there's in any of the questions that they've answered, they've asked you, you've answered no, to it, then it means you do not qualify to be registered under the turnover tax. Uh, next slide, please. And then the application form that we use uh, for turnover tax, uh, we call it the TT01. Uh, that is the form that you'll be using if you do qualify to register for turnover tax. And you can submit that form uh, through um, the, for tax practitioners, you can send it to the PCC at sars.gov.za and for all any other taxpayers you can send it to contact us at sars.gov.za and also you can do so by visiting uh, the SARS branch but please remember when uh, visiting the SARS branch you need to have booked an appointment and because uh, we at SARS uh, always try and make things easy for you our taxpayers we also have um, a USD channel uh, that SARS offers, where you can dial star 134 star 7277. Then you will have options there where you will be able to request to see what is your tax number. Uh, if you need to know the balance of your account, you can uh, do so. And if you need to find out if you need to file a return, you can, you will have that option. You can click on it and it will ask you uh, your questions and mainly your tax number or ID number would be required. And also if you need to book an, an appointment, you would then click on the request for a booking appointment and you would then follow the prompts. And another way that we have is that if you go onto the, the SARS website, again, it is www.sars.gov.za and you click on the online services, then you will then be able to also book an appointment via that option. So we do have different options. Alternatively, you can also call the SARS contact center um, and ask to book an appointment. Remember, uh, when booking an appointment, uh, you have an option that SARS calls you back and you do not need to come to SARS. So you will choose a date and time and the type of uh, uh, request that you, are, uh, you need, then they would call you back or if you want a face-to-face, -face, you they will then give you, you will say which of, of, office you want to go to, and they will give you the, the available dates and time, and you can also choose uh, which uh, office and time you want to go to, okay? So you cannot just walk into SARS, but you need to follow those, okay? And then for the 10 over text and that link, we say uh, if you are a micro business, you are allowed to be registered for turnover tax as well as a vet. That, is, that, that became applicable from the 1st of March, 2012. And then uh, a registered micro business may elect also to submit vet returns on a six monthly basis. And that would be people that are falling under category D and at the end of August and February of each tax year on a normal VET 201. So when it comes to the categories, SARS decides on what category they need to put you in. Uh, you do not choose what category you want to be in. But um, to simplify what the categories means is that 
uh, it is the time where you need to submit your return. That's what the categories mean. And the next one, please. Okay, so the qualifying, uh, the qualifying criteria is that uh, businesses with uh, a turnover of less than 1 million per annum uh, do qualify to register for that. Uh, the sole proprietors of uh, partnership companies and co-ops uh, can also apply. It excludes uh, the public benefit organizations, the recreational clubs conducting activities other than the business activities because they are already enjoying the special tax treatments. Because remember, with the public benefit and recreational clubs, they do apply to be tax exempted. So honestly, they are uh, enjoying the, the special treatments. So if we then put them under 10 over tax, it means that we'll be also killing our economy. Okay, uh, the next slide, please. And then when it comes to the partnership requirements, we're saying the, the turnover of a partnership must not exceed um, 1 million also again per annum. However, each partner can apply individually. Okay, and that that person cannot be a partner in any other partnership. And then the partner may not hold shares or interest in a company, close corporation or cooperative, other than the exceptions, such as listed under the JSE companies, uh, venture capital companies and others. And all partners must be uh, individuals. And the next slide, please. What will then um, disqualify you is that um, if you ha have interest in other companies, um, there will be exceptions and limitations uh, to it. If you are having uh, investment income, uh, you cannot have more than uh, 20, your income must not be more than 20% coming from the investment income. And again, if you are providing professional services, 20% uh, of it cannot be from the professional uh, services. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. And then for capital disposals, we're saying that the receipts from the disposals of certain capital items may not exceed 1.5 million in a three year period. And for the personal services uh, providers and labor brokers, we are saying a personal service provider or labor broker is disqualified, except where a labor broker has been issued with a tax exemption certificate by SARS. And all shareholders and members must at all times be individuals. Okay, um, the next slide, please. So if uh, you need to make a decision, if you want to take the 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 Ten over tax. Um, these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself. Is uh, keeping record too much of a burden or too expensive for you? Uh, is the current tax system too technical and difficult for you to comply with? Uh, is it costly for you to hire a tax practitioner or meet the requirements for the current tax uh, system? Uh, if, if the business is in assess loss situation, it may be better to stay in the current tax year. So those are some of the questions that you can then ask yourself if uh, you will be able to qualify or you can then decide if you want to form part of the turnover tax or not. Next slide, please. So these are the rates uh, that we are using for the turnover tax. As you can see, um, they are very minimum. minimum. Okay, where we are saying if your turnover is between zero and 335,000, there wouldn't be any taxes that you'll be paying if you register under the turnover tax. And if it is between 335,001 to 500,000, we're saying it is only 1% of the taxable ten, uh, turnover, which is above 335,000. So if you have made a turnover of 500,000, you would then minus 335,000 and on the remainder, you will then uh, minus 1% of it, and that would be your tax. But remember, you need to do the test to check if you do qualify, uh, because there are some of the disqualifying criteria. Next slide, please.
So this is just uh, an overall com tax comparison where we're saying if you take uh, a total income, which is uh, of sales of 600,000 and you minus your expenses, which are 180,000, you would then left be 420,000 which that 420,000 would be then become your taxable income. So if you are a sole proprietor, okay, you will then, uh, this 77,361 plus the 31% are found on our tax tables, okay? So it, you would then look under the tax table of the, the amount that you've made, then it will then tell you that uh, it will be 77,362 plus 31% of the amount of the taxable uh, income above 370,500, okay? And if you are a company, again, you would then uh, see that you would then uh, multiply by the 27%. Uh, if you fall under the small business corporation, then it will tell you that it will be 18,848, plus 21% of the taxable income, which is above 365. And then if you take the, the turnover tax, then it will be 1,650 plus 2% of the taxable turnover, which is above uh, 500,000. So this is just uh, a table for you to, to play around and compare to see, will you qualify or will you not uh, qualify? OK, remember the, the, the text tables are available on the SARS website and on the SARS uh, text pocket guides. They are available on our website. You can always search and they are for free. If you are not far from a SARS office, you can also go in and request uh, for the text uh, pocket guides. OK, next slide, please. Please go down. Okay, so as a taxpayer, if we want to be sure that you are compliant, um, we're saying that you need to be honest and truthful in your dealings with uh, SARS. You must understand and appreciate the risk of non-compliance and evasion. You must submit all your required tax returns and pay the taxes which are withheld by you on time. Uh, you must try and always provide accurate information uh, and documents on time. And you must always keep sufficient records uh, of, your, of your books, okay? And you must keep them for a minimum of five years after you have submitted. Next slide. And uh, some of the consequences, next slide, please. Some of the consequences of not uh, being compliant uh, would be through the, the late, late submission. There would be pen penalties that will be imposed uh, to you. And with the penalties that are imposed, there will also be monthly interest that th that will be charged on all the outstanding uh, payments. And if you have understated uh, understatement penalty, there will be a pot potential to impose even 200% on off the penalties. Okay. Next slide. Uh, there's also precautions that you can take. Next slide, please. Okay. Where we are saying on e-filing, when making use of a SARS uh, e-filing, please do not divulge your logins and uh, password to anyone. If you have already done so, you can change the password uh, on your own on your e-filing profile. Alternatively, you can call the SARS contact center. They will be able to assist you. And uh, if you think you have been affected by uh, this scheme, we encourage you to call the SARS contact center because there are people who are posing as uh, SARS officials that say that they would assist you. Um, so if you think you have fallen or are a victim of that, please call our contact center so that we can assist you. And remember, SARS uh, does not charge any fee for the services that they are rendering to our taxpayers. So you can always ask and request for identification from a SARS official. Please note, we do not uh, charge for any of our services as SARS or the service, SARS services are free. But if you make use of a 
a tax practitioner or uh, a bookkeeper, they will obviously have a fee that they are charging you. But on the fee, uh, as they are charging you on, on the fee, next slide, please. Please ensure that they are registered tax practitioners and you they will, will need and need you to give you their tax practitioner's number. And on our e-filing system, you will be able to verify the tax practitioner's number. Okay, you will then put in the tax practitioner's number and the security pin and the verification pin that the system would then give you. Then you would be able to check if those people are indeed qualified tax practitioners. Uh, thank you. Next slide. And for record keeping, we're saying a person must keep their records uh, and books of account. They must be kept uh, for five years and it must be in the original form and uh, keep them in a safe place because should you be audited uh, or we need to do an inspection, SARS will contact you and we will need to see and verify all those documents. Next slide, please. And with the digital platforms that we have or are available for SSMEs, we're saying uh, you can register your company via uh, the CIPC and uh, you can make use of e-filing. Remember, e-filing is free. It is secured uh, and it's an online platform where it is accessible and available to you 24 hours, 365 days or 66 um, at your own convenience. And you'll be able to create your own credentials, which is the, the login and the password. And please remember, do not share your credentials with anyone. Okay, and uh, as far as uh, we have our online query system where we make it easy to use our online platforms and you can access them via the, the SARS website, which is www.sars.gov.za. Www and we obviously are required to have internet access. And then we also have uh, or have introduced what we call the SARS Mobi app, which is uh, downloadable on our smartphones because we believe most of the people have smartphones now. So you would go into your app store and you would download the SARS Mobi app. So the SARS Mobi app uh, works as um, exactly like e-filing. So if you are not using uh, a computer, you can always use the SARS Mobi app and the credentials that you are using on your e-filing are the ones that can be used on the SARS Mobi app. Next slide, please. Okay, and with that being said, I'd like to thank you for your time and um, for giving us a chance to come and explain to you how SARS works. And you can always visit our social media platforms via LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and the SARS YouTube channel. And um, you, for the small businesses, you can go to the SARS uh, website. Again, it is www.sars.gov.za. And you can click on the, the businesses and employers and uh, small businesses. That's where you would find more info on SARS. And if you have any questions, uh, you can navigate the page and you, will, you can then get started. Thank you for your time. And please remember the real receiver is the, the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mpo. Uh, Rizani, you can start now with um, putting up questions for us. I just want to see if I can see from my side, our internet connection has gone a bit slow here. There we are. Okay, thank you. Um, the person asked, I registered the NPC last year, not sure what month, but struggling to get my certificate to open bank account and also don't know when the annual return should be submitted. Please advise. And the person gives the name of the company and the registration number. Uh, Simon, can you comment on this, please? Can you hear me? Good yes. morning. Uh, is it Carmen Benson? Um, with your 
password and customer code Johnny, is we are yes. hearing you yeah yeah okay yeah i was responding to carmen you can log into the system go to certificate and disclosure to download the documents okay sorry i didn't realize you were assisting us with answers as well sorry very much can you just repeat it once for carmen please okay now i was saying she can log to CIPC website, go to Certificate and Disclosure, and then download the documents from there. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, yeah, now I'm, I'm pressing through which, to check which are relevant, because at the... I know there was also a question, you might have skipped it, but where the person asked whether that this portal works the same way as the e-services when you file annual returns. Simon, you can answer that once along whether this portal works the same way as um, e-services when filing annual returns. Yeah, I think uh, they want to see. Uh, unless if the colleague can add on, on that. But according to my knowledge, yeah, they, they are the same. Okay, thank you. We're just scrolling through the questions to get the ones that are applicable to today's subject. Um, one of the people asked here, uh, when does the penalties accumulate? Simon, if you, or Rizani, if you can just respond to that. Uh, Simon? Yeah, uh, yeah. May I just ask you to respond first to the question, when does the penalties accumulate? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, remember the the, uh, the annual fine um, the late payment of annual returns uh, is that when uh, you fail to 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 file annual returns at the prescribed uh, period, and then uh, uh, say for example, we just give you uh, an example. If you were supposed to file annual returns uh, today, maybe the due date is uh, today, and then obviously they will. If you don't file today, obviously they will add uh, fifty rand, and then come again next year, and then uh, you fail to pay, they add another fifty rand. So that's why uh, the, the 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 money it it it. it, it come uh, it keeps on uh, piling piling and so forth so that's why it's, it's, it's very 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 important to uh, file uh, annual uh, returns at the uh, prescribed uh, uh, period thank you okay our next question was if an entity has been placed into final um, annual return deregistration due to non-compliance how do we reinstate by filing the outstanding returns? Do we need to file a formal restoration application first? The CRPC system does not allow for filing annual returns once a final annual return registration shows. Thank you very much, uh, Elma. Uh, remember when I was uh, uh, presenting, uh, I I explained, you know, how to uh, reinstate a, a company. Uh, say, for example, uh, that your company is in a final uh, a deregistration uh, due to non-filing of uh, annual uh, returns. So obviously, you won't be uh, directly go and file uh, the outstanding uh, annual returns because uh, the system doesn't allow you to do that. So what you need to do now, you go back and then you need to first uh, apply for a, a restoration on a COR 40. And then I explained, and then once that is done and is approved, 
uh, obviously there are requirements uh, that you need to comply with and uh, once that is done and then uh, is processed by uh, CIPC then that's when you'll be able uh, to uh, uh, file uh, annual returns and then I explained that that information also is available on a CIPC website. If you need uh, more information, please uh, go to uh, a CIPC uh, website, uh, that is www.cipc.co.za. Uh, you may also check the step-by-step -step guides, you know, to, to, to assist you. We have a um, uh, different step-by-step -step guides available on our uh, website uh, to assist you when you want to uh, apply for a uh, reinstatement of uh, your company or close cooperation. Thank you very much, Irma. Uh, why does CIPC continue to add annual returns on final deregistered entities? This creates an issue when trying to reinstate the entity as the AR must be paid for. Rosanna, do you need to come in there? Rosanna? You can go in. Yeah, please assist with this one. Uh, we need to consult with our legal team and find out how it works. Um, but come, like you said, Simon, companies are required to pay annual returns annually. So the system. Okay, can Rizani, Can we just ask that the person please log a query on our website, and then um, the applicable unit can respond to um, the question, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, now next question I think is for Sarge. It says, if a company was correctly deregistered by CIPC in 2018, but Sarge income tax number was never deregistered, how do we now deregister the company income tax number at Sarge 2? They have sent final demands for outstanding IPR 14 returns for 2019 when it in fact did not even exist anymore. Paul? Uh, thank you, Taylor Peterson, for your question. Uh, after you've deregistered uh, with uh, CIPC, and I believe they do, do give you uh, a document, you need then to come to SARS to deregister your company. Uh, in this case, what you would then need uh, to do is to submit a nil returns uh, for from 2019 to date. And if they are requesting a supporting document, then you will then give them the, the supporting document that you received from CIPC when you were deregistering your company. Thank you. Thanks, Mpo. Next question. Maybe I'll not uh, that sorry, there is a question. Will there be any information provided um, on the new requirements of submission of a beneficial ownership that has become mandatory? Okay, the regulations, I think, only came available yesterday. Um, we will very soon be having a webinar, perhaps even more than one. So, unfortunately, I can't keep the date because we only received the regulations um, confirmation late yesterday but we will be um, soon advertising so please keep an eye on our Facebook and YouTube uh, and we'll also I see people say we did not advertise this time on the website we'll also post it on the website um, but yes we will be at now I think it will be during June so um, we'll, we'll get it done as quickly as possible thank you for that question next question please uh, checking. Okay, um, I think this one is also for Mumpo. It says, Sash, why 
you would tax a small struggling business while you don't tax foreigners that are having stores and operating spaza shops and supermarket stores that accept cash only. Um, do you have a response to that? Uh, thank you, Elma. Um, Simpium Kalipi. Um, all businesses, if you have a business, a business that is uh, registered, you need to declare um, your your earnings or your activities to SARS. So, as much as the the small business is struggling, if by right you have declared um, the activities of the business, you would find that. Uh, there wouldn't be any taxes that would be imposed to you. And you would also be advised on the different uh, types of incentives that we have that you would then <coughs> benefit from, okay? And um, if, say, your, your business is operating and it is running at a loss, if you are declaring uh, with SARS and submitting your returns, that will then be kept as... Um, for that particular year as a business that did not uh, make any income, but it ran at a loss. And when it is kept, it means that you will not be taxed. And come the following year, you still run at a loss. We will add it, uh, the loss that you've made in the following year, we will add to the previous year, up until you get to a point where you have made uh, a profit. We will then minus all the losses you have made, before we can even tax you. Uh, and that will only uh, be possible if you are submitting your returns. So if you are not submitting your returns and we eventually track and find you, then you will be taxed. You will then have penalties. And for the, 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 the foreigners that have uh, shops that are operating, um, you can please report that uh, to, to, to SARS because we might not even know that they exist, but uh, it is the responsibility of all of us, the citizens, to to report such. Because at the end, whatever that SARS as is is um, collecting, we all benefit from it as the as the nation. So please, in future, if you have uh, such info, please uh, do flag it at SARS. Uh, you can be anonymous. Give us all the the details, and we'll follow up. Thank you. Okay, there's a question. Sarge and CIPC, it's I think more common, should make it easier to appoint a public officer. CIPC should have an option to do this via the system, as Sarge is very uh, time consuming, then it should automatically pull through to Sarge. Okay, I think, as I said, that wasn't really a question, that was, um, a, you know, a, a comment. And um, Rizani, are there more questions? There was a question. Are you going to this one? Okay. Are you going to be covering the new filing requirements or supporting documents for annual returns as per the revised regulations that are effective from yesterday, 24 May 2023? Um, I did comment on it a little bit earlier that we will be hosting a webinar, or perhaps even more than one, um, quite soon. And um, We've not got a date as yet because we didn't know it, it will come through yesterday, but we will be arranging here at CIPC for such a webinar. So please keep it on our website and on our um, you know, Facebook and YouTube for notices. The next question is, if other businesses are trading, then you don't qualify, but if they are not trading, you qualify for SBC tax rates. Um, Uh, thank you for that question. If other businesses are trading, then you don't qualify. But if they are not trading, you qualify for S SPC tax rates. Uh, you will need to deregister from all the other uh, businesses for you to qualify. Thank you. Thank you. Could I just mention, if you have a specific question regarding a specific business um, which relates to any of these topics, remember that you, if it's 
uh, question for, for CIPC, then you should log a query on our query system on the website because we are unable to look into your problem here during the webinar and the specific unit must respond. And if it's tax related, then you must contact the tax um, contact or SARS tax, uh, contact center. Um, I just want to post a question here, but I see it says currently um, the system error on TCPs or are there currently system errors on TCPs with the new companies registered in May this year? The TCC show IT for 2022 is overdue. This is impossible as a company did not exist and clients lose tenders. Um, Paul, is there a reply on this or should the customer contact your contact center? Um, can you please, um, can they please uh, contact the, the SARS contact center? Um, I was not aware of, of any system errors, but I, as I was engaged in this, I, I'm not sure what is happening uh, behind. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure yeah, whether this is a SARS question. It says, is it um, 50,000 rand voluntary registration turnover? Must it be yearly or monthly? Uh, I think I think it's for SARS uh, on the VET registration. Um, so the, the 50,000, okay, remember uh, I said um, if your turnover is a million uh, over the year, which is per annum, it is compulsory for you to register for that. However, if you have made uh, 50,000, um, you can then voluntarily register. So let's say within uh, three months, you see that you have made uh, 50,000 um, on different months. It doesn't mean that it has to be on one month, but three, mon three months combined, you see that your turnover, at least you have made uh, 50,000, and you see that there is a need for you to register for that because of the, the type of services that you are rendering, then you can uh, register, voluntarily register for that. They will request you to submit um, your, your bank statement, and you must have uh, invoices that were issued to you that would be reflected on your, on your, on your bank statement. So the amount on the, on the invoice should correspond with the one that will be on your uh, bank statement. Then you can voluntarily register for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mpo. I think this one is an AR question. It says, um, reference a penalty on late submission of annual returns if an AR is late. Do they pay 150, that is 100 fee and 50 penalty, or is it 100 plus 150 gives you 250? Uh, Rizani or Simon? Okay, good morning. If you run out. apply this admission of minority pay. Yeah, is to the PO150 or 100 rand fee, and penalty is it 100 plus 150. That is 250 is for 100 and 100 rand, and 150 is for CC. 100 rand and 50 rand, and for company that makes that less than 1 million turnover. Okay, thank you, Ritz Orni. So, one must check is it the company or is it the CC, and then look at the um, the table we had in our presentation uh, to see what the fees are. And yes, you add the fee plus the penalty fee together to get to the amount. Okay. Um, I noticed there's this question. What happens when a company applies for deregistration but the bank account is still active? The, the company must close the bank account. Uh, as far as I know, it's only, do you have any other comment there? I agree. Yeah, 100%. Okay. I see this, this question. Good morning. I registered with D, D 
ESD NPOs. So my question is, do I also have to register with SASH for annual returns and what are the steps if I do so? So if I understand this question correctly, this is not a company that's registered with CIPC. It's a non-profit organization that's registered with the Department of Social Development. Nico, could you perhaps comment on that one? Uh, uh, thank you for your question, Taban. Uh, you would also need uh, to register with, uh, with SARS. Uh, you can come to the SARS Pretoria office on the second floor. So when you come from reception, you would then ask them that you you want to go to the tax exemption unit and they will give you the, the application forms with all the, the requirements and uh, you will then uh, be able to complete uh, your application form. But remember, uh, even when you need to then be submitting your application form, you will still need to make an appointment with SARS so that you can be assisted. But for you to just get the application form and the requirements, I believe you can just uh, walk in. They'll be able to issue those to you. But the consultants are there, they'll explain uh, everything to you and you should be fine. Thank you. Um, this question I just want to mention, Monique asked about this portal. Um, she hasn't had success applying for a banking account. Perhaps she can just lock a call with our uh, ICT to inform them about her problem. I also see somebody asked about steps to register NPC. They can check our website. There are step-by-step -step guides how they can go about that. Um, Paul, there's a question. When a company is deregistered at CRPC, why is it not deregistered at SASH? Okay, I, I believe um, it is because uh, these are two separate organizations. Yes, when you are registering, we try and make things easy for you not to come to SARS, but when you are now deregistering, uh, it's a different process altogether because you might be uh, deregistering, uh, but you still have outstanding returns. So let's say when it comes to SARS, you are compliant. Yes, your business is not operating, you are submitting uh, nil returns. So when it comes to SARS side, you are compliant. But on the CIPC side, you are not um, submitting the, the annual returns. And it so happens that you need a, a tax compliance certificate from SARS. We will not be able to issue that for you if you are not compliant on the CIPC side. And also again, if on the CIPC, you are now undergoing a deregistration so nothing can be done. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that you need to treat uh, these entities as two separate entities. So on the SARS side, you need to be compliant with everything that SARS is requiring. And on the CIPC side, you also need to be compliant on their own side. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I have this client says CIPC does not give any documents on deregistration of a company. Um, Rizoni, can you comment on that? There must, there must be a response from the office. Always, uh, Simon, can you, yeah, yeah, can you just respond please? Uh, on the company documents, the status of the company will see be registered. Okay. And they do get no notifications in any case of where the process is or um, yes. when it is deregistered. When it's finalized, they get a notification. The customer is saying, how can I reinstate my business? I registered an entity in 2017 didn't know have knowledge of running a business like filing taxes. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Irma. 
Uh, and then I, I and, uh, and Simon, may I just add? You also, I see there's a second line where you said the business didn't make any profit um, through its lifespan. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Emma. And then I, 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 I explained about the uh, the uh, processes for uh, uh, re uh, uh, re reinstatement that the, the information uh, is available on our uh, website. Uh, if a company is uh, uh, deregistered and then you want to apply for reinstatement, first you need to complete the COR40. Uh, and then I, I think the, there's a fee payable for that. If I'm not mistaken, it's around the 200 rand. And then uh, once that is done, there are also other requirements that you have to uh, comply with. And then I said that that information is also available on our uh, uh, website. You can uh, visit uh, CIPC website, and then you can also check the step-by-step uh, -step guides that are available on a uh, reinstatement. And then uh, from there, you can uh, apply for a reinstatement of your uh, company or a close cooperation. Thank you. Okay, this question says if you register a small company with CIPC, you also need to go to SASH or automatically CIPC register you with SASH. It was mentioned in our in CIPC's presentation. Um, I think that you automatically get the tax number. So you are basically then also registered with SASH. Please uh, check the documentation you get when you register with us. Um, thank you. This one is for Mipo. With regards to tax compliance certificate, how can we go about generating this? Um, thank you. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, you can go, if you are registered on an e-filing, you can apply for your tax compliance uh, status uh, via your e-filing. And uh, remember for you to receive that as if you are registered, you do not have any outstanding returns, there isn't any debt uh, that you have with SARS, and then you'd be able to receive your tax compliance uh, certificate. Thank you. Okay, there's this question. I sent all the documents to SASH to deregister a company five years ago. Why does it take so long for SASH to deregister a company? Uh, thank you, Elsie. Um, the question that I will ask, uh, did you attach uh, the, the notice or the deregistration that was done under uh, CIPC? Because if uh, you did not deregister with CIPC and you only come and deregister with SARS, then um, I, I believe they do not action that. So what you would then need to do is to continue uh, submitting uh, zero returns. Uh, thank you. And the next one, what are the ways we can generate the tax clearance on SARS and what information do we require? Can anyone generate the tax clearance? Nicole? You have an option uh, to um, get your tax compliance status via um, e-filing, or alternatively, if you have booked an appointment and you go to the branch office, you will then uh, be able to apply, apply and know what your uh, tax compliance status is. Uh, the information that will be required would be the info. If it's an, an individual, it will be the info, information for the individual. If it is for the business, it will be the information for the business. Thank you. 
um, also for Mimpool, if your turnover exceeds a million, but 800,000 is zero rated exports, do we still have to register for that? Yes, you will still need uh, to register for VAT. And when you are then submitting your returns, uh, which is the VAT 201s, you will then uh, declare that and a calculation and assessment will be done. But you would still need to register for VAT. Thank you. For the person, I'm not going to put it on because it's not related, but we wanted to know how to get a refund if I deposited with a wrong reference. Please check our website. There is information how you can request a refund. Thank you. Um, a client saying you can't have to be compliant with both SASH and CIPC before you can apply for deregistration. Our uh, deregistration. Um, I don't know who should comment on this because she's asking about having to be compliant first with SASH and CRPC before you apply for deregistration. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Alma. Uh, I think uh, here now uh, I also explain. Uh, 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 on my presentation when I was talking about the. Uh, the deregistration uh, uh, process and then in most cases whereby a customer uh, apply for a, a deregistration and then I explain that if the uh, outstanding uh, annual returns uh, obviously uh, that uh, re uh, deregistration process uh, won't be uh, uh, will be uh, uh, declined and I'll assume that uh, one of the requirements, again, is to make sure that everything has been filed with SARS when it comes to uh, tax returns as one of the uh, requirements for um, applying for a uh, deregistration. So, yes, uh, obviously, you need to comply with both uh, CIPC and SARS before you apply for a uh, 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 deregistration. Thank you. Thank you. I think this one is going to be our last question. Um, Paul, it says on tax compliance, what are the really necessary or uh, so, yeah, necessary documents and information that must be submitted? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, there's really nothing, no documents that you would need to submit. Remember, when we are checking your tax compliance, we are running it through the system. So the system will check uh, your compliance in all levels. If you are registered, there are no outstanding returns and you are not owing SARS anything. So there's really nothing much that you will need or be required to submit, but you will just complete all the information that is required, which is the information of the business. And then the system will tell you if you are compliant or not. And if you are not compliant, it will tell you, um, it will be red in color. And on the parts that is red, let's say, for an example, it's red on the returns. When you open in the returns, it will tell you exactly which returns are outstanding. So if you are registered for VET, it will show you that on it is the VET returns from this period uh, that are outstanding. Uh, if it is for your IT14s, it will also tell you. So it will tell you in details which returns are outstanding. And if you have any debt with SARS, it will also give you the full amount of debt from SARS. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mpo. If I may slip in a last question from the same person, um, they just added it now. It says on importing is ground nuts allowed on the import list or... Um, if you can just advise, please. Okay. Uh, on 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 that question, I'm not uh, really sure uh, what the their list on import uh, goods are. Uh, we would have to find out from the the customs side uh, what is applicable on their list. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. 
with that, we've come to the end of our webinar. I want to thank everybody that have attended our webinar today. And also, again, for, for Motseme, we really appreciate your time that you spend with us. I think many people got valuable information. And we really hope that our webinar added value to our customers. Thank you for joining our webinar and have a good day. Bye-bye.